Baby Driver was one of the biggest hits of the summer box office, and now the company that modified the 2006 Subaru WRX that plays the star car for the opening of the movie is looking to sell it off to somebody who needs a car to jam out in while robbing banks. The movie, in case you missed it, is about a guy named Baby who works as a getaway driver for some fishy cats that like to rob banks and post offices and the sort while listening to music. I thought it was a good, fun movie but it didn't enamor me like some of director Edgar Wright's previous movies. Still, the opening scene drives home the concept of the movie and shows off the car in question, a modified Subaru WRX Limited. The eBay listing for the car spells out the modifications done by DVW Motorsport, including a rear-wheel drive conversion, red spray over the original grey color rear differential upgrade and the addition of a turbocharger from a 2004 STI. The listed car is the one you see on screen in the scene above, and was also used for the red carpet premiere. The listing claims the car only has a few minor dings and scratches and is in otherwise good condition at 168,000 miles, and the current bid is at $19,100 as of publishing this article which seems like a gouge for this car minus all of the, you know, movie fame. Nice price or crack pipe? There's no way I would have road tripped this to Atlanta and at least tried to get arrested in it, so it won't be for me. If it's for you and you and the bid, please do let us know. For FIFA officials they might bring the opposite but for me, they usually equate to bills and expense. Or worse. But never have I checked the mail quite so nervously as I have these past two weeks. You see, I've just had a week with the Nissan GTR, a car it's almost totally impossible to behave in. When 70 mph feels like a relaxed canter, so slow you'd swear you could just pop the driver's door open and jog alongside, your normal parameters of acceptability are shot to tatters. The GTR has always been about Nissan showing off, flexing its technological muscles. Since the first Skyline version was launched in 1969 it has attracted an excitable fan base all over the world. This new version, judging by the number of people I caught taking selfies with it, is no different. I drove it briefly, for a day, last year. That day included a few sessions at the stupidly fast Ruxton race circuit in Andover which, if nothing else, showed me how uncrashable it was. Living with it for a week and using it on the public roads has been an entirely different proposition and has taken every ounce of self-control that I didn't even know I had. Obviously, my license is important to me. I never speed in built-up areas, I'd never consider drink driving and the location of every Getzo camera in the UK is permanently engraved into what's left of my brain. But the GTR is so effortlessly and deceivingly fast we're not really talking endorsements, points and fines here. This is a custodianly fast car, capable of outrunning a police helicopter and crossing whole counties in the blink of an eye. Yes, it's make the national TV news fast and with that comes a prison sentence if they catch you using it how the makers intended. The nuts and bolts of the GTR are all-wheel drive and a monumental amount of power and torque. The twin-turbo V6 engine has 570 bhp as standard. I'm told there is an awful lot more available if you know the right engine tuner, possibly as much as 1000 bhp. But it's the 637 newton meters of torque that is the most noticeable weapon in the arsenal. From any revs, in any gear, just flooring the throttle pedal pins you in your seat and sends the world ahead into a high-speed reverse like the best video game experience. Overtakes are executed in single-figure seconds. The national speed limit takes a fraction over 3 seconds to reach, from a standstill. The top speed? Almost 200 mph. Those are some pretty big numbers, no? But for most customers the sheer presence and those comic book looks will be enough to seal the deal. Painted in the 1,700 pounds Kotshira orange metallic paint, metallic ginger as one wag put it, there is no way you're ever going to lose this car in a crowded car park. Besides, it'll probably be the one surrounded by people taking selfies next to it. What's it like to drive? 
noisy. Those fat tires generate a lot of roar. The deep, thrummy engine note is omnipresent. The rasp from the titanium exhaust system is boomy and pleasantly intrusive. Oh, and I may have mentioned, it's very, very fast, both in terms of linear acceleration, through corners and even in terms of scrubbing off speed with those massive Brembo calipers and floating discs. The back seats are suitable only for amputee dwarfs or ham luggage but, comparably, it's only as bad as a Porsche 911. But it's bangs for your buck that wins the GTR special praise. This blue-collar thug of a car delivers Audi R8 performance death for £15 K less. And that, let's face it, is bail money you might need. Anyway, got a dash, the dog's barking which means the postman's here. Fingers crossed. This year's Great American Trucking Show, GATS, taking place in Dallas, August 24th to 26th, will feature a wide range of Nissan Titan and Titan XD trucks and accessories. Visitors will also be incentivized to drop by Nissan's booth, number 12045, as they'll be receiving a Nissan Vehicle Purchase Program VPP, flyer that can be used toward a future purchase of just about any Nissan vehicle. We are excited to attend GATS for the first time with a range of tough and highly capable pickup trucks, and with each Titan and Titan XD featuring the industry's best 5-year-100,000 mile bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty, Titan will feel right at home among the industry's elite, said Nissan sales and marketing exec, Chago Castro. Among all the Nissan models to be featured at the show, will be a modified Titan Pro 4X crew cab outfitted with Nissan genuine parts and accessories, a stock Titan XD King cab, Titan XD crew cab and Titan single cab, plus even a Titan XD diesel single cab with a 1960 Datsun 221 pickup loaded in the bed. For 2017. All Nissan Titan King Cab models are powered by a standard 5.6-liter endurance V8 engine, pushing down 390 horses, while able to tow 9,420 pounds kilograms. As for the diesel-powered versions, they utilize a 5.0-liter V8 turbo diesel, with 310 horsepower. 314 picoseconds, and 555 pounds FT, 752 newton meters, of torque. Awesome Dad Award? This guy. Right here. Not everyone is fortunate enough to experience the pleasure of driving. Whether they were hurt in a serious accident or born with impairments of some kind, it's important to remember that there are people less fortunate than many of us. But Omar Chavez wouldn't let his teenage son's blindness and autism get in the way of learning to drive stick shift. Obviously he couldn't let his son, Spenny, get behind the wheel of a moving car, let alone his Subaru WRX STI. So Chavez did the next best thing, he taught Spenny how to shift the lever while he drove and pressed the clutch pedal at the appropriate time. And fortunately Chavez had a dash cam set up to capture the entire thing. With Spenny in the front passenger seat, all Chavez had to do was say which gear was required and the younger Chavez handled the shifting. Good thing Spenny had the gearing map memorized. He didn't miss a single gear. Yes, this is truly awesome and it's wonderful seeing how happy shifting and going for a ride in the STI makes Spenny. As for Omar, this guy deserves a Dad of the Year award, if there is such a thing to say that the ancient Nissan 370Z is long overdue an update is an understatement. The Japanese sports car was released way back in 2009, and was perceived at the time as a minor update to its predecessor, the 350Z, which launched in 2003, thanks to its similar styling. In car years. That's an eternity. The 50th anniversary of the iconic Nissan Z car is fast approaching, so it seems likely that Nissan will release a 370Z successor to mark the occasion.
rumors are now suggesting that this car will be previewed in the form of a 390Z concept at the upcoming Tokyo Motor Show. According to AutoBuild, the design of the 390Z concept will be heavily inspired by the current GTR Nissan will also sell the production model at a much higher price than the current 370Z, suggesting that the automaker is aiming for a more premium market. These details have obviously not been verified yet, though, so it's probably best to take this information with a pinch of salt for now. The German publication also claims that the long-rumored Mazda RX-9 will be shown at the Tokyo Motor Show. This isn't the first time that claim has been made, as rumors of the RX-8 successor were recently reignited. It will reportedly launch in 2019 with similar styling to the stunning 2015 RX Vision concept and a new rotary engine that could pack 400 horsepower. Out of the three cars that Automobile claims will be revealed at the Tokyo Motor Show, the new Toyota Supra seems the most likely since we've already seen the test mule and spy videos. Recent reports suggest that it will be powered by a BMW 2.0-liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine packing 248 horsepower and a 3.0-liter turbocharged inline-six with around 335 horsepower. Disappointingly, there won't be a manual option, so purists may want to stick with a Toyota 86. If any of these cars are due to be revealed at the show, expect to find out more in the coming months leading up to the Tokyo Motor Show in October.